Hello and welcome to the show. This week's Fair Race versus the community, we would go racing with A-Class Ferraris. Now that meant plenty of uh, classic cars would be fit to run in the class. A few other oddballs thrown into the mix cars, like the 575, for example. I, I had one of those. There's, they're quite nice cars. I quite like them, and they drive quite nicely. Uh, maybe not the cleverest of choices, shall we say. I mean, the car we're following here, off of the line, got it a bit of... I guess I got a bit of bother, just got swamped a bit through those opening corners with uh, all sorts of cars fighting away past, now coming under... Uh, pressure from one of the 250 GTs, although it was looking for a way past an F50. They're trying to go three wide. It's uh, not an easy it's not an easy call to get an overtake done, let alone trying to get three cars through all of that. So the, uh, the 250 on the outside would get the pass started. In fact, the 250 would go off chasing uh, down the F50 towards the next corner, and uh, that would get the move completed. The F50 tries to get back on the exit of the hairpin, can get alongside, actually gets a big slide on his own, and uh, not quite able to uh, maintain the speed, and it's the 575's turn to pounce up the inside of the way through the S's, a good manoeuvre, it's not an easy place to fit two cars wide, although the F50 was looking for a way back, couldn't quite do it though, on the run up towards those next couple of corners. Towards the front, and fairly early on already, the field would start to spread out. Often can be the way things go when you race the higher classes of car. The Testarossa here managing to sneak up the inside of a very brightly coloured 250, although <laughs> said brightly coloured car was uh, rather fast down the straight. Struggling a little bit in terms of corner grip as the Testarossa would get that pass completed, but we would then come towards the straight as the rainbow car slithers its way out, although a little bit too far back. Closes, but can't quite get to them in the braking zone. I was, well, I'd started at the back of the field because Forza loves me when it comes to random grids. I was uh, battling away with the uh, mid-pack, having to try and fend off a uh, Testarossa uh, with uh, kind of varying levels of success. I kind of held it for a little while. In the end, Testarossa was a little bit too good for me. I got the inside through a fast corner, the inside for the hairpin. You know, probably one of the best overtaking spots you're going to get on this Sonoma circuit. Admittedly, this layout, uh, the GP layout, a little bit easier to overtake around than the, the short layout that I've tended to run. But, uh, yeah, I, I didn't quite have the... Uh, the didn't have the speed to fight with uh, with some of these cars. Uh, back towards the front, and while the top three would start to break away, this would be the battle for fourth at this stage of the race, or one of the uh, 250s going around the outside of a Dino to make the pass stick, and in doing that opened the door for the uh, car behind another uh, more usual coloured 250, shall we say. <laughs> Sneaks up the inside of the Dino and then has a go at getting two positions in one go. Cannot quite get uh, that done on the run in towards this next quarter, although it's happy to try and sit it the long way around. There's a little bit of uh, paint swapping. I'd imagine quite expensive paint swapping. The Dino's got a very good run on the pair of them, having you know had a clean time through that corner. The <laughs> Rainbow Car is back up a position, but cannot quite get it stopped in time. It's a good cutback from the red Ferrari uh, up a uh, up two positions over the course of half a lap. The Dino's trying to get back in on the action, although doesn't quite have the speed to uh, fight it in towards the S's as the pack behind would start to uh, catch up in all of that. Uh, the purple Testarossa, that would continue its march up through the field, coming up against the uh, Ferrari 355. This particular 355 struggling a little bit around this circuit. I mean, this, while well, the front sort of top group had, uh, say top group, the top few cars had pulled away and were having a bit of a lonely time, this sort of big midfield group were close together for uh, for quite a while as the 355 is desperately trying to fend off that position from the Atesta Rossa. But it's kind of one of those, it's only a matter of time. You've got to hope you can hold on for as long as possible. The Atesta Rossa had a, uh, quite a lot of speed as we head down towards these final quarters. If you can sneak the nose up the inside here, you're doing well. Can't quite do it. The 355 does cover that one uh, nicely, but it's a little wide on the exit. And that Testarossa is going to get to the inside, down towards the hairpin. The 355 tries desperately to uh, hold it under brakes. The end trips over one of the 288s and, uh, yeah, just can't, can't quite keep up with the uh, Testarossa and would drop back. 
Uh, the, the 575s? Yeah, we didn't have such a great time around here. You know, the big heavy Ferraris were... Uh, we're okay, but uh, not quite, not quite up to the uh, task. This particular one coming uh, under pressure and wouldn't be passed the 288 GTO uh, straight around the outside through one of the uh, the fast chicanes. It wouldn't be long until I was in a big uh, 288 GTO battle. I don't quite know how it's worked out. I all of the 288s had found themselves surrounding me through one way or another. And yeah, I, w I was actually making ground on one of them, trying to find a way past. The white car ahead of me, however, going to the outside at the final corner uh, was not the bravest or was not the cleverest idea. I mean, it was brave, it just didn't work out for me. Tried to sweep around the outside, couldn't get it to work, had to lift, and then in lifting, the uh, white and red car behind would come soaring past, and uh, I'll try as I might, I was, yeah, not quite able to fend that one off either. Uh, at the front, it was a much lonelier time. Uh, the Dino had got to the lead early on and able to run, in fact, as you can see, pretty damn clear. Now, there were cars further back setting similar lap times, but some of those that had to fight their way through the traffic, you end up one and a half thousand foot behind. Sure, you can set the same lap time as the Dino, but you're not going to be able to do much about catching up to it. Yeah, a little bit of a lonely race for the four, well, certainly for a lot of the top three. I had a very exciting finish to the race, continuing in this big old... Uh, 288 battle. I was determined to try to at least make up something on this final lap and as two of the cars ahead fought one another, one ends up out on the grass. I spot my opportunity down towards this final core. It's a big dive up the inside. I'll make sure I get my car stopped. It's always the risk when you've got so many cars close together. You've got to get your car stopped so you don't end up running into the back of one of the vehicles ahead. I had, was having to go around the outside for a second time in as many laps. Thankfully for me, I would just do it. It was only by a nose, but it was enough to see me up a position on the final. I kind of achieved what I wanted to. Uh, to the podium, uh, please don't me, would take a victory with the Dino Invisible AK in second with the Testarossa, while Muri would get third in one of the 250 GTs. Race number two, and we would head to the Bugatti circuit. Forza was kind. It's rare, but For Forza was kind. I started on second. I actually got a pretty good, pretty good launch in the big 575 was able to get myself well, roughly to the lead, although I uh, would have to fight it around the outside on the run towards, well, through the first corner, the run towards the second corner, the uh, 250 LM would uh, squeeze past. There wasn't much I could do. Like, I immediately recognised the unbelievable speed of the uh, the 250 LM, and, and yeah, there was very little I could do about, uh, <laughs> about that one. Uh, however, he did uh, leave a nice little door for a, an opportunity for me to uh, sneak the 575 back past one of the GTOs, although it was only ever uh, just about alongside. I didn't quite get the pass completed here, and it's uh, again, there's another corner where you are a really, really long way around the outside. I used as much of the racetrack as I possibly could on that one. Still we go side by side, although I have got the preferred line down towards this next corner. There's another uh, GTO behind, though, waiting to uh, try and uh, follow through, and sure enough, the red car out wide, and a blue GTO would get a pass. Yeah, these are very expensive races, let's face it, in this in this kind of uh, <laughs> this kind of circumstances. These are pretty pretty expensive races. In fact, I would be surrounded by uh, by classic cars for much of this one. I would slip to third and then come under increasing pressure from another uh, GTO. This one uh, right around the outside of the chicane. Admittedly, I may have got some wheels across a curb and got my car very sideways. Not the cleverest thing to do. Uh, it's surprisingly easy to do with uh, <laughs> the 575. Yeah, needed to be a little bit more careful. In the end, even if I held it there, I'm pretty sure this car would have gone either gone past down the straight or gone past by the time we got to the uh, next corner because he was already long up the road by the time we got to the end of the lap going chasing down that, uh, that second place vehicle. Again, much, well, kind of like we had seen at Sonoma. With these, you know, much faster cars, it is easier for the races to to get spread out and we did see a fair bit of that uh, going on here this was further back outside the top 10 uh, Ferrari Dino and 355 fighting for position through that chicane trying to give each other enough space going too wide through what is a pretty nasty uh, back chicane uh, problem is the more they fight the more they slow each other down and uh, well the more you the more you end up doing that you get to let the cards behind 
uh, start catching up as they head into the uh, final quarter. I think the lock-up from the 355 causes them both some trouble. The Dinos are determined to try and make that position work around the outside of the final quarter, although wheel across the curve. I don't think quite made the sand trap. Not ideal, uh, not ideal car position, and here comes that uh, 250 LM with a huge run out of the final quarter with everybody far too busy fighting one another. The LM gets two positions in... Well, kind of one straight, not even not even a quarter, just <laughs> one straight, and that is enough to get the uh, positions to work. Where we did find groups of cars, I mean, you can see here, this was for uh, eighth place between the F50 and the Testarossa, I think it was. Um, you can see the gaps that were emerging in the field. It's just one of those things that can happen in races. There was a shunt in the earlier stages that did spread the field out uh, even more. So, yeah, it was not perhaps the most exciting of races for, for everybody. If you did end up in a little battle, though, like this one, it was quite good fun. The uh, Testarossa, no, well, just about getting it stopped. Not, not quite making a normal line through all of that. The F50, uh, far superior when it came to the uh, corners. The Testarossa, uh, a little bit faster when we got to the uh, straights. And again, the Testarossa, despite that earlier mistake, would lead by the time they got towards his next chicane. <laughs> However, the F50, so much better through the corners. It is uh, the inside for the first part of the chicane, around the outside for the second. Testarossa, uh, realising it was a little bit beaten when it got to the uh, braking zone, is uh, nice and kind to the to the F50. Yeah, it's a good pass. Good pass. Not, uh, not an easy one to get worked for that chicane. It's a uh, rather, rather nasty corner. While it might have been a fairly spread out race for most, I had actually managed to reel back in one of the uh, the GTOs I was sat in fourth place, but in reeling in the GTO, I'd also been caught by another 288. Uh, so, I, apparently, it just it, I, I wanted to race against the 288. Uh, this was an uh, interesting battle. The 250 was very, very quick down the straights. My 575, more of an overall car. Uh, the 288 behind me, much more of a handling car. Uh, although, I wasn't that much faster than the 288, which was a little bit of a concern and a silly mistake by me uh, through this uh, sort of nasty downhill section. I just ran too much across the inside of the corner, turned in a little bit too sharply, trying to defend my position sort of bubbled and made a mess of uh, that particular corner and while I would you know fight my case to try and make it stick when you're on the outside of the car that's better handling than you you know you're going to be having a pretty tough time at the front of the field it would be the 250 LM that shot off at the start that uh, would go on to take victory but only just only just the uh, GTO had methodically lap after lap caught up to the back of the LM, but it was not quite going to be enough. One more lap, and that LM might have been in a lot of trouble. But as it was, yeah, just couldn't uh, couldn't quite make that one work. The battle for third was much more exciting, as me and the 288 continued to squabble for position, and this kind of gave the GTO a little bit of a lifeline here. Kind of gave it a... because we were stuck going side by side for, well, half a lap. We're still going side by side. I <laughs> looked trying to go around the outside. Again, I can't quite make that manoeuvre work. I just couldn't get my car to the inside of the place that I wanted to. And this was the point where the GTO was going to stack all of us up, because the GTO wasn't particularly good around these final corners. 288, uh, trying to go around the outside of the GTO. I spotted an opportunity to draw alongside. I got my nose there, but it wasn't going to be enough. In the end, we would finish the uh, race as we had kind of started that... Uh, that lap, I couldn't quite find a way past. Uh, so TR King Copper would take victory with the LM. IX Twisty in second uh, with uh, EVR Lee MT just about holding on to the uh, podium with his GTO as well. Our third and final race, we would head to Michello. Of course, we'd have to go to an Italian circuit at uh, some point if we're racing uh, if we're racing Ferraris. Now, Michello is an interesting an interesting track. A lovely wide turn one. Unfortunately, you see a car got lag fired. <laughs> very, very powerful lag cannon. That one launched somebody into the gravel trap on the outside. Yeah, turn one, very, very wide. And then it feeds into these chicanes where you sort of spend a lot of time side by side. You certainly uh, get a lot of kind of sort of two trains form. You get a lot of two wide for a number of positions backwards in these opening laps. The uh, GTO making the pass stick on that uh, 288. There's a long way around the outside, but the GTO did a great job 
of uh, getting that pass completed. The uh, GTO with him being a little bit of trouble trying to hold it around the outside of uh, California. Couldn't quite make that one stick with a big oversteering moment, managing to uh, at least keep it off the uh, runoff area. Yeah, the 288 would fall uh, back to a fourth place as uh, the rest of the cars would uh, kind of uh, just about sort themselves out. This was certainly one of the more manic races, uh, most manic races that we had here, at least with uh, plenty of uh, of action. It wasn't it did get a bit spread out, but it wasn't anywhere near as bad as uh, as previous rounds. This uh, 250 GT had many straight line speed. The California, no real match. Uh, neither was the 360. Nope, that's going to go soaring past. You go busy itself chasing after a 288, almost getting to three cars down the length of the straight. It's a long straight here at Mugello. It is a very, very long straight, although it did rather struggle to pull up at the end of it all, as, as you can imagine, with, with all of the straight line speed, not quite so much in terms of the grip, although was able to uh, get that pass completed and busy itself chasing after the vehicles ahead. At the very front, well, the top two would be lapping plenty quick and able to pull a pretty damn big gap to the cars behind. Again, cars behind fight for a couple of laps and these two could escape away, although they would then start fighting one another. The 360 Challenge leading the way, at trying his best to defend from that GTO. 250 a little bit quicker down the straight, although was going to have to... Uh, have to do it the hard way. The 360, big, big dive under brakes. Get it, get it judged perfectly, pretty much. Gets it stopped, gets it parked on the apex. The uh, GTO unable to quite get the cut back at the first time of asking, although through these uh, through these S's, that would be a, a repass for the GTO. He's now got to be careful on the run down towards the next turn. The 360 Challenge can't fire the car up the inside, and indeed, the uh, GTO doing a good job of covering that inside, uh, just able to make sure that there's no room for the 360 Challenge to fight back. And once you can get out of that uh, sort of an initial initial dangerous areas, the 360 Challenge can get close through here, but these are not particularly good overtaking opportunities. And in the end, the GTO was just a little bit too fast. The uh, Dino, well, that was going very quickly, but was very much stuck in traffic. Having started down the order, you got a lot of cars to try and fight through in these opening laps, especially when you come up against, you know, two cars you might be significantly faster than, but they're busy fighting one another in the shape of the other uh, California. The uh, 288 uh, had a little bit of a mistake and would drop to the back of this group as we head up towards the uh, final corner. The Dino is going to be brave and try and go... The, uh, well, around the outside at the final corner is not a pass that uh, gets pulled off particularly often. The, the Dino holds it there. It's a, <laughs> I mean, it was a very, very good effort. The Dino can hold it there, however, does not have the straight line speed as they head down towards the first corner. The yellow GTO with many speeds comes soaring past. Now the uh, white GTO wants to buy into all of this as well. And this is the frustration when you have one of the, you know, one of the handling cars, you've got coming up against some of the speed cars that absolutely saw past you on the straight. You can't really slow them down there. You get to the corners and then they slow you down. Uh, the the 288 managing to try and, well, too many cars in too small an area and one of the 288s coming off a little bit worse. But yeah, trying to make your way up through the field uh, is, is not always so easy when you've got all these big battling packs. The uh, many colours of, of GT, well, that would be... Uh, well, very fast down the straight, and again using that, uh, clearing the uh, California, putting himself up into a third place. And again, that around the track, while you know it might not be the uh, the most outright power uh, power necessary track, it's much easier. You lose less time when you can power past a car on the straight uh, than when you have to try and outhandle it, and you get stuck in battles for a two or three laps or whatever. At the front, uh, having uh, fought for that lead once the GTO had got himself to that uh, that first position, was able to pull out a little bit of a margin. wasn't as wasn't as comfortable a margin as we had seen in, in some races, uh, but yeah, it was uh, just a bit too quick for the for the rest of us to 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 really deal with. Uh, so yeah, would be the GTO taking victory, the challenge 360 challenge in second, while the multicolored uh, GT would come home in third. Once again, I would have another 
a mad, mad final lap, and I wasn't the only one. The big old, well, I say the big old, there were two of them, but the, the 288 GTO uh, little group here with a California and a Testarossa uh, in with the mix uh, would be fighting to the finish. The Dino eventually cleared these cars and buggered off into the distance, but these guys were going to continue to fight for position up towards the final turn. They're trying to go almost three wide into there. Testarossa's going for the uh, long way around the outside. The California trying to sneak the nose up the inside. The yellow car with uh, not so much grip through the turns, but a huge amount of straight line speed. Uh, it's perhaps not quite in range to catch these two. The California would just outstretch the uh, the 288. The uh, yellow car was coming quickly, but couldn't quite beat the Testarossa. It was a mad finish for those guys, and likewise a mad finish for me. I got stuck up a little bit behind a Ferrari FF that was uh, pretty awful. It was very quick down the straight, absolutely awful through the corners. I managed to finally sneak a pass up the inside, but then we go three wide in towards the next corner. It's a bit of a squeeze through all of that. I find myself yet again fighting another 288 GTO. There's a bit of... <laughs> Again, a bit of paint. Probably between two of the least expensive Ferraris in, the, <laughs> in this race, as I'm still stuck on that outside line. Now, I know I've got to be far enough away from the FF. I know the FF is going to have a lot of speed out of the final corner. So I had to uh, yeah, try and make sure I could get clear of that. Still wanting to find a way back past the, uh, the purple 288 if I could. And he runs very wide through that back chicane. I carry a lot of speed down here, but I'm forced to that outside line. I know that's not really likely to work. I want to sort of cut underneath, try and get a run towards the uh, finish line. I can't really do that. The 288 does a good job of covering all areas of approach. Thankfully for me, the FF is so terrible around the corners that uh, even though I've not really been able to do much about getting myself a uh, safe distance, the FF just wasn't close enough in the end. It was, yeah, a, a very a very hectic race. But all of them were pretty damn hectic races for me with the, uh, with the 575 to the podium. Uh, IX Twisty would take a victory with that uh, GTO Mugen in second place with the 360 Challenge and Pega uh, claiming third with the 250 GT. I always knew when okay, I came to building a car for this. The 575 was not exactly likely to be the sensible choice. It is quite big, quite heavy, and doesn't have a huge amount of PI to really play with. I did very much like the car, though. I have to say, as, as a car to drive, it was really rather good fun. It couldn't match the pace of certainly the, the classic Ferraris that could often be very light and have as much power as, uh, as my 575. Uh, they might have been a little bit of a handful through the corners at times, but yeah, when they have such huge power to weight ratios, I just couldn't quite match those. I was not a bad, it wasn't a bad handling car mine, uh, but over the course of a lap, yeah, it did struggle a little bit. However, I'm kind of happy I ran it because even though I did not finish particularly high in most of the races, in all of the races, I had an incredibly close finish. I spent most of my time battling. It might have been for the mid pack for two of them, one was for third. I had a lot of fun with it. So yeah, I really liked my 575, even if it wasn't, it certainly wasn't going to get anywhere near the fastest lap of the race. It was a really quite nice car. So I'm still pleased I chose it, even if it wasn't the most spectacular performance-wise. That, though, is going to be it for this week's Versus the Community. The next one is going to be on Thursday, the 17th of May. We are going to go racing with just an open B class. If you'd like to sign up and take part in that, then you can via our forums. There'll be a link in the description. Find the Ferraris Versus the Community section, and you can sign up in there. However, that'll be it from me. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye.